Hi folks, it looks like Panasonic is on fire because they officially registered three new cameras in China. What this means, I will explain in this video, but before that, the usual reminder to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button to not miss any of the upcoming rumors. So folks, yesterday Panasonic did officially register two more cameras in China, so we now have a total of three cameras registered in China that have to be announced soon. Usually when those cameras get registered, it takes about two, three months until they get announced. It's not always 100% accurate, but more or less that's about it. And the only info we can learn from those registrations is that those are not entry-level cameras. The reason is that all three support the dual band Wi-Fi connection, so 5.1 and 2.4 gigahertz, which usually um, means that it's a mid to high-end camera. And so we can now hope that we will get some exciting new camera from Panasonic. The only info I have about one of the cameras is coming from one trusted source. So I'm pretty sure that one of the cameras is the new high resolution camera from Panasonic. The other two, we can only speculate what could be announced. And first, let's kick off with the one thing I know and then speculate what could be announced next. If you remember, two months ago, a trusted source told me that the Panasonic 100mm macro lens would be announced in January. After that, we would get the Leica SL3 sometimes around early spring. And only after that, we would get the Panasonic high resolution camera. The trusted source was obviously right with the first two rumors. So I'm sure that he will be right also in the high resolution camera. And specifically, he said that the Leica SL3 and the new Panasonic high resolution camera are co-developed by Panasonic and Leica. And the agreement is that Leica will announce it first and Panasonic a couple of months after. So this would mean that at best, we are getting this new camera from Panasonic in June, July. From what I understood, they should have basically the similar specs or the same sensor with probably Panasonic being more focused on the video part. So a sort of Leica SL3 with better video and lower price. And yeah, of course, the Leica is probably better built and the Leica menu and other nice features. But I expect the new Panasonic S1R2 or S2R, I don't know what the name will be, to be very similar to the SL3, but lower priced and with better video performance. So if you can't afford it, the SL3 definitely wait for the Panasonic. That's all the info I got about this camera. I hope the trusted source will share me some more tidbits in the upcoming weeks. Uh, I'm pretty sure he will. So stay tuned on this channel if you want to get more Panasonic info. About the other two cameras, that's a speculation of what we will get. So um, there are many possibilities. Uh, first of all, there could be a new compact L-mount full-frame camera. That's a possibility because actually a Panasonic manager um, last year said that they're interested also in making very compact L-mount cameras. So this could be an option. There could be also a L-mount video focused camera. So something more like Sony is doing with the FX lineup, a FX3 clone with L-mount and so forth. That's also an option because Panasonic also in this case said they're working on it. I don't think we are getting a S12. I think the S52 well fits that spot. I don't think there's room for the S12. So my best bet is that we are getting a compact camera or a L mount video centric camera. What could be another option? Um, I keep my fingers crossed we're getting the new GH7 Micro Four Thirds camera. As you know, the G92 is a superb camera. It's basically nearly in every aspect superior to the GH6. So it would make sense for Panasonic to announce the GH7 with face detection IF and video performance that is um, better than the one we see on the G92. It would make sense, so this could be an option. Um, some other Chinese uh, wave accounts I read that many do believe that all three cameras are actually L-mount. So this would mean no Micro Four Thirds camera, but that's only pure speculation. I think, yes, probably two cameras are L-mount, but the third one could be the GH7 because this is really overdue for an update. So, and it would be also finally good news again for the Micro Four Thirds uh, system because it's uh, one of the strengths was always the video, the GH 
lineup was very popular if you remember the gh1 gh2 gh3 gh4 um, were very popular among the cinematography community and in the cinematography community also that full frame APS-C micro filters argument is less important than it is in, uh, in the photography community because uh, micro filters really is very good for video it has some advantages one side compact but also you don't need really full frame for most of your video work often you need more depth of field than less depth of field you're not going for that uh, 1.2 bouquet when you're shooting uh, professional work most of the time and yeah then you have less problem with overheating you can read out the sensor much faster because it's smaller and so forth there's some advantages of on having a micro filters APS-C smallest kind of sensor in the cinematography and videography world that's my opinion at least well, let me know in the comment system what you think about um, what i told you today about the cameras you would like to get so i'm pretty sure the high megapixel camera is coming um if let me know if you would consider to get this one if it has similar specs to the sl3 let me know also if you would like to have a very compact element camera or a compact video focus Elman camera and also if you're a micro filters user what you expect from a possible GH7. As soon as I have more info I will make a new video so again subscribe to the channel hit the notification button and I see you soon folks.